I think I analyzed this correctly. I'm quite certain that they just had that in their music video and then they were like, mirror ball, clown cancer, Japanese yeah. lady cut. I mean, if we know <laughs> anything about the stream of consciousness fucking lyrics that these guys do, like it's like Aphrodite at the asylum buying lots of onions or pot like Pokemon. Our best friends got to the cat, monkey, chicken, fish, frog. Like it's... <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's literally nonsense. Yeah. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God awful movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Ethan Wright, and I'm joined by the Eminently inscrutable Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? I'm pretty good, Heath. Or is it? <laughs> what? What do you think Sorry, inscrutable he called, means? He called me inscrutable. It's like you don't know <laughs> thing, right? Like ooh. It's not understandable. Actually, you were kind of close. <laughs> yeah. Man of mystery. <laughs> <laughs> is the Fed a Ponzi scheme? We'll never know. Yes, we will. Don't. I'm, I will. <laughs> I will turn this car around right now. <laughs> All right. Let's just uh, plow right ahead. We also have veteran guest masochist you heard her already anna bosnick is here anna thanks for joining us ooh, ooh. yes i love that noise so anna oh yeah you ready to talk about this movie oh i'm ready i am so ready to talk excited? About- would you I even am- call it a movie you know what it's more like a m- music video a music. yeah yeah right mer- Video. It's, it's a like, long music video, but the music isn't music. So it's like it's like the remember when the Bee Gees did uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Heart Club. Sure, it's 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 kind of like that. It makes as much yeah, sense. Absolutely. So let's uh let's spoil it for everybody. What thing Miazka are we going to be breaking down today? <laughs> we watched Newsboys <laughs> Down Under the Big Top. Ooh. It's the story of a small town American kid who runs off to join the circus and finds his way to Jesus <laughs> through the power of 90s pop rock and an extremely <laughs> intimate relationship with a mop. It's very close with the mop. It's Honestly, very I, bad. I just learned that for the first time. It's upsetting. <laughs> as you were saying it. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that could be what that was about. <laughs> yeah. I was too busy writing. <laughs> I hate this in my notes. What? <laughs> so very confusing. I, you know what, but I wrote that halfway through the, once I figured out what the, the mainstream plot was, but that was not the case yeah. by the ending. You had to go back, I'm sure, but I'm I'm impressed you figured it out at all. If I had to write that part t- this week, I would not have had anything. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Pass. Acid. This yes. movie was acid. <laughs> I literally in my notes was like, did I take acid today? <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, well, uh, Eli, tell us, how bad was this Nyazakal? Well, if you loved the japes and storytelling of Yellow Submarine, but you'd like a band on the opposite side of the talent spectrum to the Beatles, (laughs) you will love this movie. This movie sucks a lot of ass. It really, it really does. We've, We've talked before about the idea of like good, bad and bad, bad and bad, good and good, bad. It, this is bad, bad. It's bad, 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 bad. This is bad, 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 bad. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of which, is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Ooh, 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 ooh. Best, worst, animal budget. (laughs) Did they have one? There will be a lot of animals referenced. Sure. I mean, it is, it promises circus animals. They had the budget to know of animals. But the ones that we find, we we actually get our eyes on. The the cute little bastards we get to put our eyes on are not what you'd expect. No, no, they, they... or as many as you'd expect. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they're lovely. All animals are lovely, but they are lovely. And the this movie, I hate what they do with it. I I can't stand anything that happens with animals. Yeah, you know what? I again wrote this before the ending of the movie, and now I'm a little triggered. <laughs> All right. Everybody put a pin in that for the ending Ooh. of the plot that we're going to get to. Ooh. I was going to go with best, best. There was one shining aspect to this movie. Best, Ooh. best. Ooh. Angry clown coach at Clown yes. Academy. Yeah, you know what? I'll yeah. take that. I he will was take that. 
amazing. It's like a crazy, angry little league dad coach. <laughs> yeah. But for it was like my dad, if he wasn't a sculptor and was instead a clown, teaching me <laughs> angrily to be a clown. Yep. So perfectionist, it was the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of whiplash, or as I would call it, <laughs> slip on a banana peel lash. Wow. <laughs> I spent a lot of time trying to come Just up with something. Slip. That was the best I got. Oh. No, I can slip. There's like, what's this? A slip yeah, no, you're explaining it all the way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they say, tell, don't <laughs> show. That's jokes that you explain. <laughs> I'm going to go with best worst way to shove a music video into the movie at the end. That's, oh. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? I, I, I this need... was supposed to be a vehicle for the newsboys to make <laughs> three music videos. Wait, it was? Yeah, no, and we'll get to this. They thought this was going to be like the start of something big. Yeah. Oh, we will get to this, <laughs> Keith Enright and Eli Bosnick. I don't know why Eli is the one telling us and, about this. And when they reach the end of what they go ahead and call a plot, they're just like, ah, shit, we need, we need to do that other song. So they just fucking do two more songs. Well, and then they like ran out of film and they just cut a song halfway through at the end, too. It would be like if well, Hamlet stood up at the end of Hamlet and was like, I'm sorry, there's this poem I wrote about flowers that I've been meaning to work <laughs> into this thing. Well, I don't know. They also got very meta with it. Very. Sure. Very. They got very Facebook. They got super Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think we need a quick break before we get into this oh, nonsense. Oh, fuck yeah. I need a break. And then we'll be back to tell you all about Newsboys Down Under the Big Top. Hey, Anna, you doing start a sketch grumbles over there? What's wrong? Oh, it's just Eli. He's just constantly demanding that I do this thing at home, like night and day, and no matter what kind of day I'm having, he just um, presents himself to me and starts uh, begging, you know? Wow, okay, uh... I don't think I'm really the person to... Uh, yeah, so to I was wondering, okay. would you do it? M me? Oh. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Uh, I, don't, I don't really think that he'd want me oh, to, to Trust to me, that. he'll take it from anyone. There's yeah, a place next tracks. to our Starbucks, and I swear he goes there once a month. That is if he doesn't get it from the gym. At the gym? Wow. I, I just... Yeah. That doesn't seem like... Uh, so a reasonable thing what do you say? Do. Will you rub his shoulders? Massage his shoulders. Oh, Okay, got it. Yeah, right, right, right. But um, why don't you just try Theragun? What's a Theragun? Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. And it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. Oh, that sounds like just the ticket. It is just the ticket. Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, you want to treat an injury, or just the stresses of everyday life, there's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. After I used my Theragun, I felt like a bowl of sweet, sweet relaxation flavored jello. Okay, Heath, I'm sold. Where do you get one? If you want to try Theragun for 30 days, starting at only $199, just go to therabody.com slash awful right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash A-W-F-U-L. Therabody.com slash awful. Awesome. I mean... But what did you think I meant? <laughs> no, no, nothing. No. Because you said maybe. You, you did. I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Anna Bosnick. As you may already know, this month is our mostly annual fundraiser, Vulgarity for Charity, where you donate to charity. And as a thank you, we give the person of your choice a proper roasting. But did you know that your roast can take a musical form? That's right, it can. Thanks to my musical talents, we've roasted two sets of bad dads, a set of bad moms, the Gilmore Girls, and a whole bunch of dogs. So many dogs. And don't forget the Jehovah's Witnesses. Would that I could, Heath. Would that I could. <laughs> and if you got the dough to spend, your roast request might end up being a song as well. Maybe Eli will even give me more than 24 hours notice this time. Mm, wouldn't count on that. So... Here's the deal. Donate $50 or more to someone who needs your help at modestneeds.org. 
send us the proof along with who you'd like us to roast to vulgarityforcharity at gmail.com, all spelled out. We have details and pictures, please. Exactly. You can even request who you want to do the roast. Maybe you want Keith to roast your dog. No, no, no. no. Keith We're not doing, loves no. We're not do- roasting I'm dogs. seriously not doing That's that this true. time. Nope. He does. He loves roasting dogs. I'll sing a fucking song. I swear to God, <laughs> I'll do a song. <laughs> you don't want that. Yeah, about roasting dogs. <laughs> We'll be roasting the choices of our top 100 donors and 100 randomly chosen ones as well. But get those donations in quick because you've only got till November 24th. And the sooner you donate, the greater the chance that you'll be chosen. Vulgarity for charity. Being bad never felt so good. Or musical. Or musical. And we're back. And we're going to start off with an old couple getting interviewed like... Harry Met Sally style about their son, who was apparently one of the newsboys, Phil Joel, I think. Yeah, Uh, I'm guessing that this was just like the one of the newsboys parents talking about how disappointed they are in him. And they were like, you know, we could use this for the movie. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's Midwestern couple whose son has a deep Australian accent. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yeah. I didn't notice that yet. Yeah. He's supposed to be one of the Australian ones. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And it sounds like he's run away to join the newsboys. And they're like, our kid was doing fine. And he was fine. And we were fine. But he asked us if we were fine. <laughs> and so, conflict. Yeah. Apparently, he wrote him a letter and he said, how are you? And mom was like, how are you? And she just starts crying because he, he said, how are you? In his letter. To be fair... No one wants to be reminded that they're related to a newsboy. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's what I thought was happening here. I thought the parents were being like, yeah, so being a band, that's a terrible career choice. Parents hate that. And then it was a Christian band. Fucking gross. But no, they weren't talking about the newsboys yet. They were talking about how Phil Joel joined the circus. Which, can I just say, I would be so happy if Max decided to join a circus. My parents would be so happy with me if I had decided to join a circus. Like, that's not a bad career choice. I don't like the, like, malnourished part of the thing. Sure. Yeah, that's problematic. Yeah. Max, if you're listening, I would like you to not join I would like Max, Max not to join Max, if you're listening, you follow your dreams, bud. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to end up dreams. having to, like, pay for stuff. I don't want to. Come on. I'm going to go to fucking what watch you, you do a clown for? thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be dead very soon. Thank you, Heath. I appreciate (laughs) it. That's exactly what I was talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but thanks to Policy Genius, we have an excellent... (laughs) (laughs) Thanks to Policy Genius, Heath won't have to cover anything when my heart explodes in the middle of a (laughs) bonton. Also, Clown Dog. Yeah. Clown Dog. So now we cut over to the sun. Oh, yeah. He's in the circus. He's writing his parents a letter. And this is where we meet. I think we can all agree on this podcast. The star of the movie. Clown dog. A dog in a little clown hat. Oh, yeah. We fucking love this dog. (laughs) I wrote in my notes. All right, audience. Anna and Heath are now diehard fans of this film. It's going to be just you and me trying to criticize it. Oh, I was. They pried me away from that stance real fast. But yes, at this moment, I was like, dog, he's playing with the dog. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. But the scene is so bleak. He's drinking (laughs) milk from a carton and he's inside like a shipping container where he lives. He's making a hot dog. Over a candle, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And the dog's just like, come on, man. Like, you got to do better than this. This is. Yeah. But this is rough. What I love about this is that he gives the dog half of his hot dog. But the dog has like this beautiful coat that has obviously been groomed to perfection. It's obviously like this really fucking healthy dog. So I feel like the dog just comes and like hangs out with the dumb noob. (laughs) <laughs> just to like steal half of his <laughs> half of his only dinner, just you know, because he can. Okay, I love this parallel fiction where the dog is fine and not part of the circus. Yeah. I know <laughs> Phil Joel is the victim of the dog here, and I'm happy yeah. about it. Yes, I'm, yes, exactly. Yep. I'm I'm totally on board with that. I am into it. Yeah, he he offers the dog a bite of the hot dog actually, and he's like, okay, but the burned part of the hot dog gives you cancer. And the dog's like, I want cancer. This is the worst. <laughs> you know, you know, whatever. I hate my life with you, Tritos. Give me the beef. If it's shortened, it's less time with you. Uh, so now we're going to cut over to our first music. And this is the Newsboys performing in front of a crowd of literally dozens, dozens, I dozens, say. And they're showing us crowd surfing. <laughs> if you crowd surf at a Newsboys, at a Christian rock concert, 
you just fall. You fall on your face. That's what yeah. happens. The idea that they did a crowd surfing joke and it wasn't Jesus on the cross crowd surfing <laughs> is a huge waste. <laughs> what a tremendous waste. That would have been so fucking good. Also, what is this U2 knockoff bullshit that we are listening to? If you can, if you're going to rip off music and make it Christian, you can do way better than Bono. <laughs> no. I, I'm mad. <laughs> I'm mad that it's even slightly related to YouTube. That bothers me. I didn't. Yeah, it's it, 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 it's just like the. It's you could hear Joshua Tree basically yeah. in this music. If Sunday Bloody Sunday was playing and they were doing the Jesus Crucifix thing, road crowd sure. surfing. Now I'm just grateful that iPhone doesn't download a Newsboys <laughs> album onto your phone and not let you undownload it no matter what. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Be a lot worse. So yeah. They sing a little bit, then we watch them come off stage. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm so, so sorry. I'm sorry. I have more to say about this. First of all, swordfish crowd surfing. Great. Wait, is, did that really happen? This was the first time yes. I was like, oh, did yes. I hear acid? And gorilla. And gorilla start crowd surfing, which is great. Also, it looked like the drummer was singing lead on this track because he was actually using the microphone in a way that made sense to be a singing. The lead singer is, no, it turns out the lead singer is is actually singing and he is bopping around on that stage with his microphone like all the way out in front of him, like uh, moving it around. It would sound, if that was actually mic'd, it would sound like Eli on a trampoline. It would just be like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and the lead singer is on like a two and a half second Skype delay from the rest of the band. Exactly. He is, yeah, he's definitely, they're, they're definitely doing music via Zoom meeting here. <laughs> So now we cut to them leaving the stage after their big successful concert. And this is just such a fantastic moment because it's one of the only flashes of newsboy reality we get because they all walk off stage and they're not rock stars. They're just no. fucking divorced dads. So they pick up their big dad water bottles. bottles of water. A church group hands him a hands their lead singer a fruit basket. And he pauses in absolute horror and self really He comes unfucking stuck in time as we watch him. He's Billy Pilgrim. He's absolutely Billy Pilgrim longing for Dresden. And they show us this for so long. And it's this newsboy just thinking to himself, he's standing next to two kids who gave him a fruit basket from their church group. And he's posing for a picture for 45 seconds of silence, just being like, my life is really sad, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yes. Know. Don't you know, never give him a fruit basket. His whole family was murdered by fruit baskets. <laughs> Honestly, that, that, that makes this track. Yeah. It's just back, you know, back on Chalf Malfador and they're like, hey man, you fucking suck. <laughs> clap hands, clap hands, clap hands, clap hands. You suck. This is worse than Dresden. This is, <laughs> this is significantly worse than Dresden. At least those school children got to boil. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that school teacher. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to cut to earlier that day where lead singer, does anyone know lead singer of Newsboys name? No. Including Absolutely him? not. What? Okay. Nope. Yeah, fair. He was literally in the um in the IMDb as uh I think it was like pastor or something. Great. Yeah, this is 1996. So this is I actually I'm so sad that I know this. Michael Tate, I believe is the name of the actual lead singer now. Oh god, there really? You go. Oh yeah, no no, the lead singer now is the one that they stole from DC Talk. That's correct. Which is actually, yeah, exactly. Which we'll get into I'm sure on God awful music at some point. You a big Skillet fan too, Anna? Uh, I'm a big Skillet no. fan. No, not a big DC Skillet Talk. fan. Just know about Christian music because of this fucking show. <laughs> What has my life become? Okay. <laughs> Whew. Either way, he's going to go visit his Uncle Luigi, who is dying very humorously. Yeah, okay. Uncle Luigi is doing a Brando impression for his last words here? Um, I'm pretty sure that's uh, Jabba the Hutt. Yep. You're, yeah. I would say Brando in Star Wars as Jabba dying. You know what? Let's just say Pizza the Hutt. There we go. <laughs> I think we can all agree that Job of the Hut was based on the end of Brando. <laughs> <laughs> this family is made up of every pop scare from a Stephen King novel. Yep. Yeah. I'm surprised there wasn't a truck sadly vroom vrooming in the corner. Yeah, there's literally <laughs> clowns all over the place because it's circus. Luigi has a circus. Yeah, and there's the two girls dressed at the same thing. But the point of this scene, and I don't know why they chose to do this through a translator, but Uncle Luigi is asking him on his deathbed to come do one last performance at the circus so that he's not in debt. Because if he 
if he doesn't make enough money before he dies, he won't get into heaven? Is that what they're going for? I mean, that sounds pretty Christian. I couldn't. That's what Uh, I got. There's just a couple (laughs) moments in this scene that we need to cover. It's hell. First of all, the scene, like the rest of the movie, is genuinely hell. It's like a crazy person got to put on a haunted house. Right, like Mm -hmm. you just walk into a room and they're like, "All the whoppers are nailed to the wall," and you're like, "That's it's scary that you have a nail gun." (laughs) Yeah, that's that's what this movie is like. There were Disney balloons, Disney party balloons in the background. At one point, the nurse at this hospital gives him medicine in a big spoon. Yep, which is a terrifying insight into what the newsboys think (laughs) healthcare is like at a hospital. This guy's dying of. Clearly like lung cancer. So I don't think any lung cancer medicine comes in a giant spoon. I don't think they have that. He asks for the kid to do funny faces for him like a baby. Yeah. Just to make him laugh. Also, like, so he says, pay off my debts by doing the circus. One last time. Yep. Famous newsboy Christian star You need to get enough money, so go do the circus. Don't use your newsboy money. I think Uncle Luigi knows enough to know that the the newsboy (laughs) money is not going to cover anybody's debts. Unless there's a lady who's like come up short at one of those quarter candy machines. I don't know, man. You're the one who's always like, we should switch sides. Sure. We should switch sides to racism. (laughs) I did. The one thing I loved about the scene, though, is Uncle Luigi is like roasting this newsboy. The whole time, he does. as yeah. his dying words, he's like, "You're a fucking disgrace. Your music, I, your music, it's bad. It's bad music. I don't like your music. And you, are you wearing a gold <laughs> suit? You look like a goddamn figure skater. I don't know what's happening." He says, "You look like a like nobody in this family of literal clowns has any stones to throw at newsboy fashion here, <laughs> yeah. or figure skating fashion. They have some pretty good stuff in the skater camp. Figure skaters, yeah, yeah." But my favorite part of the scene is at the very end, he's like, please, please say yes. And the newsboy's like, mm, let me, uh, that's yeah, a, maybe. I'll just uh, give a few more seconds, probably. Yeah. Yeah. He's dead. That's a no. I said no at the end. <laughs> Flash cuts over to Heath, like taking notes yeah. for how to not be in a relationship from the corner. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle I love Luigi. spending time with your deathbed. <laughs> Uncle Luigi. <laughs> I would love to not Aberly. Did you do a double negative? Not. I'm dying, but I can hear you. <laughs> and that's the end of the flashback. So now we're cutting to the newsboys doing their nightly post-show toothbrushing routine. Oh, yeah, that's in so a sad. public bathroom. Again, they're in a public bathroom. Exactly. And like what this movie has for us is secret deodorant jokes. In case you want to know the level to which we've sunk to, one guy walks over and he says, what's the name of that deodorant? And the other guy goes, secret. And the guy goes, come on, please tell me. And then they just sort of pause as they realize that their 50th birthday is days away. Oh, God. (laughs) I didn't even notice that pun. Yeah, he says, I stole this from my wife, which is really fucking bleak that they are. They have families and they're quitting They have families at home and they're using their only vacation days to go join the fucking circus. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That that is the point of this scene is that main lead newsboy gathers them around. Oh, there's a little bit about how the bassists keep quitting Mm. um, and then killing themselves, I assume. (laughs) And okay, he gathers them around (laughs) and they all immediately sit on the public bathroom floor, like right away. This was revolting. Now gather round, children. We're going to learn something about God by giving up our only week of vacation for a bunch of unpaid work we aren't qualified for. Sounds right? Cool? Magical? Realism? Yes. Slippery and sticky at the same time. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, he convinces the band they are now going to go join the circus. Yeah. And there's a moment of magical realism here. But for gaslighting? Oh, God, I forgot okay, about this. This was this. insane. Thank you, Anna. Oh, shit. This sucked, so, this sucked so much ass, I literally deleted it from my brain. Okay. So he's like, we're going to need hard work, fervent prayer, and false advertising. And they're like, false advertising? And he's like, I didn't say that. And then he pulls out his remote, 
Like Zach from fucking Saved by the Bell. And rewinds the movie. Rewinds the movie. And then he says, fall advertising. Okay. <laughs> That's what actually happened. What is fall advertising? Nothing. It's I nothing. I don't know. I don't know. The seasons are different down there. Okay. What would false advertising even mean there if what he said was false advertising? No, no idea. just did it to gaslight They us. just saw on MTV someone do the thing where they rewind a thing and they were like, that's what the kids like. We're going to work that into a movie. <laughs> okay. In, in, in the movie, in the canon of the movie, in that universe, was he gaslighting and lying or can he actually time travel? Well, it comes back, Heath. So does come I back. didn't watch we'll most find of the rest out. of the movie. I watched it at 1.5 <laughs> speed. It's a lot more fun at 1.5 speed. Y'all are just weak. So now it's time for them to meet the circus. So he basically he's like, hey, everybody, now that we're here at the circus, we're here to they do a little interpretive dance about how bagels are made. God oh, God, damn I it. forgot about that. <laughs> and they do more puns. I, I hated so much. Mm. It's like an opening I would write for me and Heath to a sketch that I eventually cut. <laughs> it's like, no, donuts are not made that way. Bagels are baked and donuts are floated in oil. No, I think bagels are actually made in oil. And I'm just like, oh, my God. It's like when you're on a subway <laughs> and the crowd is really tight and you get pushed up against someone's boring conversation and you want to turn to them and be like, hey, I know you're talking, but like I'm in it now. I can hear your <laughs> shitty conversation about your furniture and if you don't stop, I'll kill us all. Bagels are actually boiled. and Bagels are boiled and then baked. It's both. Oh my God, it's both. What is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like they saw Help or A Hard Day's Night, one of those good band movies, you know, and uh, they were like, oh, we're going to go for some Richard Lester zaniness and just like random. Whoa. When they didn't realize that's not what people came for. They came for the fucking chemistry of the Beatles. Like, I don't know who <laughs> any one newsboy is named. I don't know what any of them are are called, what they're what they play. I know that one of them bounces around like a fucking maniac and holds his mic out at arm's length. But that's like it. <laughs> They have a drummer. This is all I know. They have a drummer and a bongos guy separately. Yep. Obviously. <laughs> and the noise of bongos never enters the track. But there's a guy who's like, I have bongos, but you have to let me use them. Yeah. <laughs> Guaranteed, he is one of the divorced dad's divorced brothers. And he was like, our band on the second day. And they haven't had the heart to break it to him. Wife got the kids. I got bongos. I'm fucking using them. <laughs> you think any of these youth leaders are open to fucking no okay it's fine it's fine I'll be on the bus no shitting on the bus but crying is allowed am I right you guys have to tell me let me borrow your ankle stick <laughs> so yeah the, but hey they can't just be dumb they also have to be unlikable so oh, he's yeah. also going to introduce himself to the clowns by leading them all in prayer which the clowns all react the same way we do. I was Which very proud like... of the clowns. <laughs> <laughs> These clowns are like, fuck your face. <laughs> fuck any of us that aren't Christian. Does the movie think clowns are just people who always dress like that? Yes, I it think does. that's what they 100%. believe is the reality. Yes. Yeah, this is also where we meet the twins. They will not matter, but... When they were making this movie, someone who knew the newsboys said they knew twins. Uh huh. They forgot that identical twins is not the same as conjoined twins. Yes. So when these identical twins showed up, everyone was very confused that they weren't connected at the hip. And they didn't talk at the same time. And that they didn't talk at the same I time. I thought yes. you guys talked like couples answering machines. Isn't that what, isn't that like biologically true about yeah, twins? Yeah, what twins have to do? They talk every other sentence and a half. At the same time. But then they overlap for like half a cent. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's for like two words and then. <laughs> they do it so badly. It's honestly like a really bad improv troupe. Yeah. They were definitely sure that this was something that identical twins could just naturally do. Like being double jointed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But there was this this movie counts for God awful movies. There was an accidental really good atheist argument moment in this scene. So, oh, I mean, oh, I'm interested. I'm, I'm ready to there. Hear so there's the the clown that his name's what Sacky or something, and Hack and hack, Sack, and he's like, and my sack. partner clown is Hack, and I'm Sack, Hack and Sack, and I was like, I will kill everybody. I will kill a fucking newsie <laughs> right now for sounding similar. I will kill a child. They keep doing puns like that. I was furious, but then something fun happened. The clown gets up and he's like, you fuck your stupid prayer, but. 
Now that we're doing that, if you're praying, I want you to pray for this lotto ticket to win. And I was like, oh, yep. That's actually a really good response to the Kalam cosmological argument right there. That's what you say back. There you go. Pray for this lotto ticket to win. And we should point out that Sack, by the way, who I just want to throw this out there, introduces himself first. Like, he's like, hello, everyone. My name is Sack the Clown. And I was like, ooh, do not let Sack the Clown be alone with you. And then he's like, this is my partner, Hack. But, like, there's definitely a good 30 seconds of your name is Balls hanging in the air before he (laughs) reveals that pun. But we learn that Sack is the villain, and he's blackmailing the young guy with the parents from earlier to do his dirty work. Hack. Hack is, because the the little one is Sack. Sack is. Hack is. This is very important which one it is this for the is plot. so important. Which one is They're it? They're both Tony D. It I'm so matter. confused if we don't settle this. <laughs> Anna, we will break. What's that podcast that was a couple and they broke nope. up on it? <laughs> this is us now. <laughs> Whatever that is. This Hack is, is oh, this is our Ono with Ross and Carrie. Coughs in, in the in the thing later. And then Sack is the tiny one. Hack is my best word, my best best. Yeah. Yes, Hack is Hack your is best, the best. angry clown yeah, coach. Sack is the guy who yeah, stands up and, and does the atheist argument here. Yes. Uh, okay. I thought he was also the one that that gave Blondie the. the black Nobody's gonna he understand this movie if we don't get this correct. He's hack. Yes. I, hack no, is, he's fucking sack. He's not sack. He's hack. My darling. Hack is the one. My darling. I will my watch love, this movie right now. My beautiful bride. Okay. <laughs> woman of my dreams. <laughs> the bad guy is Sack the clown. The bad. That's Keith's the, dad is Hack the clown. That's correct. This is how uh, John Mulaney and Olivia Munn broke up. So. I thought that I I thought that Hack I agree that Hack is the, his Tony D who teaches the clown class. Okay. I thought that Hack was the one that made the Blondie go. No. Okay. Sack. All right. Cool. <laughs> Morgan, I want you to keep all of this. I want you to keep I, all of this in the episode. Okay. All right. I'm hurt. All right. I am hurt. All right. I am. I guess Noah, or Keith, allowed to be wrong. Can anymore. you please introduce the second interstitial? <laughs> and I can continue this hack and sack. We're not going to talk fight? about Australian James Bond. Oh God, yes, <laughs> yes. So the organ player, a, when the twins stand up, he gets a big boner. Yeah, and he, their names, one of their names is sorry. God, was there an erection in this moment? Um, yeah, because they stand up and he does like a wham 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 wham. There was moment. an implied erection in this yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, he plays the sound effect of an erection on the organ? Is that what you got from that? No, he just no, gets he like just, a slow just, motion glossy camera. Yeah. And that's, I'm confused. Anyway, so one of the twins is called Carlene. The other one's called Darling. And he's like, hi, darling. And uh, she's like, "Would did you just fucking call me darling? And he's like, oh, no, I wouldn't do that. And And then she sits down and says, I like his accent. He sounds like James Bond. <laughs> I just want to. I just want Australian. Australian James Bond. Vard come on, tiny. Shy can not start. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love it. I have the worst Australian accent in the world. I want Paul Hogan as the next Bond. Oh, no. Yes, chair spins around. There's just a manta ray as the villain of the next <laughs> series. Gee, 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 gee. Ray Comfort as Bond, even better. I know yes. that's not Australian. <laughs> gib, gib, gib. Gibbity, gib, 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 <laughs> That's Mission Impossible. Gibbity, 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 gibbity. There it is. Gibbity, there you gibbity, go, gibbity, yeah. Gibbity, yeah. Well, now. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that scene's over. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Sorry. There was one other thing. I don't think they got back to this, but the Phil Joel, he's the guy whose parents were at the beginning. He's a newsboy. He's at the circus. He's the, like, new guy at the circus. It, Mm-hmm. He he goes over to the donuts on the table during this little meeting and he picks up a carton of milk and he looks at the side and it's got a picture of somebody who's, you know, kidnapped. Him. It's it's him. him. It's him. He referenced it earlier yeah, in the refer- movie. Yeah, he was he like, was you like, need an updated you need picture, to get a better Mama picture yeah. of me for the milk carton because nobody understands me with the. Is he kidnapped by the circus? No, no he his ran parents, away. He ran away. His parents put him on the milk carton. That's the also, joke. can I say this spread for breakfast? This is exactly what I I envisioned for a band that wrote "Don't Serve Breakfast in Hell." Yeah, <laughs> very carb heavy, not a lot of schmear. It, yeah, no <laughs> schmear, like no schmear, no schmear, not fruit. Very just goyish. plain bagel, just yeah. baked and not boiled first. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, this has wedding Poached brunch bagels. written all over it. Just circle bread. Fuck you. Yeah. All right, I think that <laughs> I think we I think we could uh, close out that scene. 
before we find out about that kidnapped situation, whether he has a twin brother or so you're saying it was him who was kidnapped? Nope. It him. Yes, it was, it was him. him. Okay, yeah. well, no, he wasn't kidnapped. They're never. He, he ran Keith away. Has written. Well, before we find out about the kidnapped twin brother, it has no out <laughs> of this section of the podcast. They are never going to address this again. I thought it was maybe he had a twin brother. I thought the clown mentioned maybe it was a twin. Whatever. They don't come back to this. He's kidnapped. I don't know. It's time for a quick break, <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be back with more newsboys down under the big top. Boo. Boo. Hi, I'm Anna Bosnick. As someone who lives with Eli, forgotten subscriptions can be a major problem. I have no idea what she's talking about. Whether it's a vegan snack box, a magic website subscription he never uses, a vegan snack box, a streaming service he doesn't even remember that we have anymore, or yet another vegan snack box, forgotten subscriptions can add up and be a major pain to cancel. Oh, so many gray box buttons. That's why there's True Bill. What's True Bill? Seriously, I just got on the board. I'm behind. Like, stay I'm behind lane. Carl. You stay in your lane. You stay in your lane. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. And it'll save me money? Oh, it sure will. On average, people save up to $720 a year through Truebill. I love that it lets me know when I've got a large transaction and suggests a budget if I want to make one. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash awful movies. Go right now. Truebill.com slash awful movies. It could save you thousands a year. Okay, but I'm keeping Hulu. Name one show that you watch on Hulu. Hats. Okay. All right, news boys, gather rain. No, I get weekends and holidays. We've talked about this, Susan. We've talked about this. Uh, Mock meeting? Yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm going to call you back. This is not over. So, as you know, the time has come for a Newsboys movie. We want it to be fun and really show off our music. So, you know, what do people say about our music here at the Newsboys? Um, they mostly laugh at us. Yeah, and that record producer called us ASS clowns. ASS. Yeah, he did. He did. And that record label called us SHRT. Yeah, wait a second, guys. Laughter, clowns, and doo-doo. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Uh, we should just give up custody entirely. I should just do that. You, Mark, the circus. Our music video uh, is yeah. about us I'm saving the, the circus. Damn thing. I love it. Hooray! You should be assholes like their mom anyway. Whatever. Mark! Sorry, sorry. ASS holes. And we're back. And we open up on the blonde guy, Phil Joel, and he's apparently just hanging out in a field next to a barrel, daydreaming about filleting something like you do. Yeah, definitely practicing a beach face. Right? <laughs> definitely practicing a beach face. I think they tie this in later. I have a theory about this. Okay. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Remind me near the end. I am, oh, I think I know what you're hinting at. Yeah. I I don't. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. I think it's okay. So now we have to talk about the car full of little people. Yes, we do. These are the little people's performers, performers union. union. Indeed. Yeah. And they are here to threaten him because Sack, his boss. <laughs> Sack. Not his hack. Boss? His boss. Phil Joel's boss is Zach. Zach. Right. And he sent Phil Joel to meet with the union, yeah. the Little People Performance Union. You're right. Because he's the short guy. He's pretending. He's pretending to be a little person. He's just a short guy. He's just a short guy. Yeah. And that's what this scene is about. Yes. My notes for this scene are, hey, guys, I'm pretty sure this movie is hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you say that a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, so they do a a sort of like it's a gun. Oh, it's a lighter. It's a gun. Oh, it's a business card. So Chekhov's gun that never Okay, but it do, I think it does fire. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Chekhov's Chekhov's gun shaped lighter. They set up a lot of great little Chekhov things in this scene now that I think about it. Yeah. I've often said that the newsboys under the big top is the Chekhov. It's, it's, re it's really the it's the Chekhov they can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's what's happening in the plot. They're meeting with Phil Joel, the 
Little People Performance Union because they're mad that the circus is hiring scab little people instead of the union workers, right? Yeah. Well, not yeah. not just scab little people. Sack, who is not a little person, he's just a short guy. Yeah, at first I was like, this is so dumb. Why wouldn't they just take it up with the circus, not the performers? Like, that doesn't make sense. And then I saw the act later on in this thing, and I was like, yeah, that's fucking really offensive. So I'm on board now. Yeah. There's a lot of pro little people in this movie. Yeah, but then also they make fun of them in the performance. They do. Yeah, it's, it's gross. It's Most, really gross. Positive. This is all horrible, gross, negative. Well, because the actual little people in this scene are very kindly. Well, they say the lines, we're little people, we don't hurt anybody. That's, okay, want to give credit where this movie's due. He goes, you want to know something between a little person and a short guy? Show him, Tony. And then one of the little people comes over and sort of gently kicks him in the shin. And the newsboy is like, oh, that didn't hurt. And he goes, yeah, because little people don't hurt anyone. I'm offended by that. I think little people can hurt you if they want. I don't understand. I, first of all, I, I have been around little Lucinda. I've watched hurt Lucinda people. hurt people. <laughs> I was more angry about the anti-union message than anything else. But yes, also yeah, this, this was too. horribly offensive. Yeah, it was. Yeah. OK, this is. Yeah. Hire unions for your, your circus. Don't be an asshole. Whatever. Yeah. So now the movie's going to be broken up into days. You know how halfway through it's always a good idea to start <laughs> introducing a, a day based a time timeline. element. Yeah, sure. So now it's Monday. The circus is going to be on Saturday. So on Monday. They take clowning class? This is the first day of clowning class, yeah. and okay. they're practicing getting hit in the head. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, and I'm just going to say, lining up the newsboys one by one so that they can be taken out Looney Tunes style, that's a pretty that's a pretty fun afternoon for me. I was enjoying watching that. This, <laughs> this is fantastic. I would pay a really embarrassing amount of money to punch this cast one at a time for this scene. <laughs> Because they're just getting it pied in the face and punched in the face and hit with like a big funny mallet. I would pay so much money for this. That's our million dollar idea. Oh, Body slam <laughs> <laughs> a cameo. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and as a wee college student, I actually took a circus kills class. It was a required thing in my uh, acting career. So uh gave me a lot of lots of flashbacks. It wasn't unsimilar. I'm just going to say it wasn't <laughs> untrue to reality. Yeah, this is where we're going to get Heath's best worst, where the circus director, Hack, is like yelling at them because they're not clowning in the right way. He like yells at them about how to pie themselves in the face. Yeah, and I thought this was great, actually. <laughs> they they do the pie in the face thing. The guy gets pied in the face and then, you know, he licks the cream. And <laughs> my my dad, the clown coach, runs in and he's like, Typical mistake in pie work. You wait a full <laughs> one Mississippi, <laughs> then you lick. Obviously, that's the timing. And it actually, timing, timing, it's actually timing. a really good tip because they show yeah, it. it and is. he's like, okay, one Mississippi lick. And it was so much funnier. It was so much funnier. It is funnier. I really wanted them to continue with the whiplash, though. Like, he brings in a tape <laughs> and he's like, this is a student of mine passed away today. He could slip and fall on a banana like nobody else. <laughs> At the end, the blonde kid's just like pieing himself in the face. It's super fast. <laughs> He's just hitting him in the face with a pie tin over and over. It's just him and Hack making hard eye contact on stage. One Mississippi. Nope, you're not with me. You're not with me. One Mississippi. It's just one. See, that would actually, that would actually get yeah, on somebody as home videos. might not have a great message in the movie. I just, <laughs> I just realized that the moral of that movie is like it's worth it. <laughs> I thought yeah. that's, is that not correct? Because he's a better drummer at the end. Mm. Yeah, at what cost, though? My therapist disagrees. At any cost, Anna. Any cost. <laughs> any cost. Do you want to be a drummer or do you want to be happy? Do you want to win or do you want to be you happy? You know what? Actually, I'm, I'm no longer surprised that you have that reference, <laughs> that you have that idea of flip -flash. You're outvoted two to one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but who's right? So this is also, and I can't who's believe happy? I have to say this, this is also where we introduce the plot element that Hack, who is the clown teacher, the whiplash clown teacher, his dream is to be on America's Funniest Home Videos, but he refuses to stage it. So <laughs> this is going to matter because it's how they'll wrap up the entire plot of the movie. He's a very compelling character. He's a purist of the clown art form. He's not going to set up some hacky bit. He's going to have it happen organically. All right. Despite his name. Exactly. Nice. All right. But then an amazing thing happens organically, but the camera was off. No, oh, uh, shucks. 
his pants get pulled down and the pie flies up in the air and he looks up and it lands right on his face and sticks and he waits one Mississippi and he looks, it was, I actually laughed out loud at this little, this little clown bit. And then they didn't get it because the camera was off. Go see some Cirque du Soleil. Not enough French. All right. So now <laughs> this movie's really it. fucking weird. I don't know what's happening. It's really weird. It's so bad. It Heath loves it. So apparently, he, he laughed at it. It really spoke to Heath in a lot of ways. I really, I really enjoy this character. <laughs> <laughs> he's basically Pagliacci. I mean, like yeah. they, this could be an opera. Yeah, he's so, he's Tony D. Yeah. So now we cut over to them rehearsing for the circus. With a commercial director? So with a commercial director, yeah. This guy looks like a Paul Lind impersonator at a high school like talent show. Yeah, I got I had Leslie Jordan trying to appeal to teens vibes. Right. And he's always trying to feel out a key party, is what it feels like. <laughs> at any moment, he's always like leaning in in weird angles. Just shaking a fishbowl at people. <laughs> what are you doing with the bowl? Oh, salad. I don't know. <laughs> always initiating a shoulder What's massage salad? without asking. Yeah. <laughs> What's Theragun? <laughs> he's supposed to be giving the like, this is how you reach to the people thing, but He's just accidentally doing like the Christian rock manifesto, which is like, <laughs> look, our thing fucking sucks, but we have to appeal to teens, right? So let's Kids take are gonna the thing they like and make them. it Christian. Right. Yeah, this was bullshit. This was like the movie trying to like wink at winking at winking at winking at itself. That's nothing. You can't. No, no, no. You're not tricking it. You are bad at relating to kids. Oh, no. The movie wasn't trying to do that. They don't know. They think they are a legit alternative rock band. Oh, do they think they're like edgy? They think this, they think that this movie is basically spinal tap. People are going to be so <laughs> into it. Yeah. What this movie needed is bare naked ladies to like bust onto the set and beat the shit out of them. Yes, and then they leave. Okay. Oh my God. I do believe this is completely unscripted. I'll believe that about this movie. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. And he does this. Okay, so they're like, we need someone to play. You know that, you know that one instrument in the band, you know, that's like a guitar, but with four fat strings and it's really low and it isn't a guitar at all. And it's actually tuned in force all the way and is like played by the band. Oh my God, the bass. Like you the bass. The most fun. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the, they're like, who plays the bass? And, and blonde guy's like, I do. And they're like, you play the bass. He's like, well, but well. he doesn't. He plays the stand up mop. Okay, so they don't say it because they're like waiting to like for a big reveal. And he says, well, I have to see what the janitor's doing. I was like, oh, fuck, he's going to play the washed up bass. Yep. He's going to play the washed up bass. <laughs> and I fucking called it. And he does. Oh, well. That's a, that's a joke. Well. Is it a joke well, in the movie? Is this a comedy? Hmm, you know what? We'll we'll find out in the next scene. <laughs> We're going to we'll find do. out if it's a comedy. Oh, oh no. no, 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 it's not a comedy. <laughs> So now we're going to cut over to Tommy Sins. This is their black friend. This is their black <laughs> They literally just have this interview. They do like uh, another Harry Met Sally interview just so Tommy Sims can be like, yep, yep that I am a black person and they could know play me. Bass. <laughs> so I was like, hey, they got the one black guy in a rock band or Christian rock band to, to be their world renowned bass player. But then I was like, it was kind of on me because I looked up his like Wikipedia and apparently he was also a studio musician toured with Bruce Springsteen. Really? Co-wrote a bunch of like really cool songs, including Change the World with Eric Clapton, which I don't think is that cool, but they won a Grammy. So like, huh. I don't know. Yeah, he wrote, wrote for Destiny's Child and shit. He, I guarantee he's the coolest person in this cast. Oh, he definitely is. They got Tommy <laughs> Sims way late. When they started the band, not Tommy Sims. Oh, really? I thought he... Oh, okay. In fact, I looked up Whiteheart because I was like, oh, who's Tommy Sims? And I found he was in Christian band Whiteheart. So I looked up Whiteheart and I, I found a picture of them when they started in the 80s. Oh, my God. Tim, Tim, you have to take this and you have to put this on the Facebook page <laughs> so that people can experience Is it. Is this like a tag yourselves or not? Nah? It, it looks I, like a counting crows turns into scaring crows. Want, it looks like Mr. Big's mugshot <laughs> after a sex crime. I want to be the guy on the right with a side bang. I love that guy. <laughs> so I've got that picture. And puffed sleeves. He's got puffed sleeves. He's got legit puffed sleeves. That's a silk shirt, by the way. Absolutely. I've yeah. owned several of those in middle school. I need pictures of that too. <laughs> and so, yeah, I found that picture of them. And I also found a picture of them now. 
So I put yeah. them next to each other. It's and a, they I gotta, still look like divorced dad. How it started, how it's going, and it's rough. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not great. This is definitely uh, my t- plans for 2021, the Delta <laughs> yeah. variant meme <laughs> waiting to happen. <laughs> this is... Plus Michael Sims. Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah. Plus there's Michael a, Sims, a polo shirt. who in the after picture, I should point out, looks defeated like he like he lost the contest and now he has to be (laughs) like he lost the contest and he has to be in the picture with them like he just lost rock paper scissors and he was like fuck (laughs) being stupid photo this is what fits clothing is for what is it what's it called cuts clothing clothing this is the sport of business of christian rock (laughs) cuts clothing the official shirt of Of christian rocker of white (laughs) heart the divorced dad leather jacket i actually have one of those the official <laughs> shirt of of getting back out there. So you can, yeah, he's going to play the washtub bass. You can play some a pretty dope walking bass line on a washtub bass. Like you? there are some, yeah, you look up some YouTube videos. You can play some no. pretty cool stuff on a washtub bass. <laughs> what you cannot do any, it will not sound like electric guitars. Like <laughs> it, it just, it just won't sound. It can't be electric. You can't put a pickup on that. Yeah, so they made Tommy Sims be like, yeah, he's a really fucking great bass player. He's talking about a washtub bass player. So now it is Tuesday. Yeah, good. The time dimension was confusing to me until they had the title card here. Oh, thank God. And this is where it's going to be the putting up posters montage. (laughs) (sighs) Putting up poster montage. Putting up poster. And he puts up a poster, but but then a fat guy. He puts up a poster about losing weight and then yeah. he puts up his poster on top of the fat guy's poster and the fat guy's poster and the fat guy is like, uh-uh, and then they sing Back their up. song. Right. Yeah. And that's not funny enough. So then they did it a third time. And they, I think they nailed the uh, really offensive fat joke on the three beat. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. The three beat. Also, the, the fucking pole is empty. It's empty. There's a whole other side. It could be he could move his poster slightly to the top or at the bottom. Or I could walk onto the screen and punch him in the face or hit Uh, him with a large (laughs) hammer. There's a lot of things that could have happened. Honestly, if this comedy bit had continued like two or three more times and I had looked over and there was a demon who was like, do you get it now? I would have been like, (laughs) right, I died and I'm in hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The fat guy has a shirt that says, if you can't run with the big dogs, stay on the porch. And I, I just honestly, I... I thought that was more intriguing than the concept of telephone pole real estate. So, yeah, but the important part of this scene is that we learn that Joe Bob, what's his name? He has two first names. Bill Joel. Bill Joel. I call him Blondie. Sure. Blondie. Phil Joel is having a spiritual crisis with a mop. I'm sorry. (laughs) With a mop. And the leader of the band gives him the Bible. A Gideon's Guide is what he calls it. A uh, Gideon's Guide. Yeah, I was. All right. So during this this song that they're playing, we finally get to see the washed up bass in action. And obviously it is not does not sound like a washed up bass. It can you can do not you cannot do with a washed up bass what this kid <laughs> is doing. I agree. Like, and sustained it's notes. The musicality I'm sorry. Of this washed Stay, up sustained bass. notes. You can't play anything that requires more than one string. <laughs> You sure. can't move around while playing because your foot has to stay on it. Like, wait, you have to use your foot? Yeah, you have to keep your foot to put the like to to on the wash tub. Don't act it out. We're so, in a sound studio. Uh, we are in a. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you, My wife's just audience, kicking all I'm of just, the plugs I'm out of putting, the wall. I, I have overturned the table. So there's a bucket on the floor. You have the the mop up here, and you're not supposed to keep the head of the mop Stop on it, otherwise it fucks up the sound. But they keep the head along, so it looks like he's jerking off a Muppet the entire fucking time. Like, and then of course, after I write that he's jerking off a Muppet, he is the 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 mop is actually in the boudoir scene that is in in silhouette, and it yeah, it gets uh, pretty romantic. It gets it very yeah, romantic. We get a little, uh, he shot gets of him very in the very close, close with this mop. Yeah. Also, just needs to be noted that the song that's in the background here, which is the point of this montage, the song is. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Breathe a breath of God. Oh, okay. God. I just heard breathe on me, breathe on me. Breathe yeah, on me is the title of the song. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I can't, I'm trying to think of a title that's more objectionable than breathe on me. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That screaming cowboy guy from the Citation <laughs> Needed episode <laughs> we did on Terrible Songs. He watched this and he was like, that sucked. You guys suck. <laughs> Can I give you guys a note? <laughs> 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 
Massage my shoulders when I don't want you to. <laughs> the song. Yeah, get a Theragun. Okay, I think we're going to call that the end of Act 2. God knows I have no <laughs> idea what's happening. We're taking a fucking break. There's Act? Yeah, there, maybe there's Act. I don't know. Let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Ooh. What? <laughs> Find out the answer to that question and less when we return for the rest of whatever the fuck this is. Okay, what's the next final ad for this week? Uh, Mint Bumble. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, I actually switched to them when they became an advertiser, Anna. Do you want to do a no, thing? No, where no, maybe no, no, no. Anna and you got to do a, you did couple stuff for the last two ads. I want to do one. I want to be in this one. I mean, you and Anna were in the therapy. No, no, no yeah. it was still about you, though. Anna and I have a friendship. Uh, I want to do one about our friendship. Okay. Okay. I got something. Thank you. Great. You do? Okay. Yeah. Well, fine, fine. Be my guest. Do them in mobile ad. Okay. Hi, podcast listener. I'm Anna Bosnick here to tell you about Mint Mobile. The reason that Heath Enright can totally text you back. Okay, really? Mint Mobile offers premium wireless wow. service starting at just 15 bucks a month. So Mint Mobile's secret is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. By cutting retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that get passed down to you through some mystery fee. Instead, Mint just passes on sweet savings direct to you, which means... Heath has both time and money to have that long, long phone conversation. With okay, you. I, I, ha I have lots of extra tasks. No, I, I'm he doesn't. Busy a lot. I literally watch the guy do his job yeah, every week. People have different paces for their work. I, I write deliberately. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Hey. If you've got Heath in your contacts, why not call him today to talk about your feelings? Maybe let him know about oh, your work okay. drama. Why are you doing this? Really? Why? To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month with mintmobile.com dot com slash gam okay scotch we could have done a scotch commercial we both like scotch yeah we could have mint mobile heath can totally text you back traitor you're a traitor <laughs> all right everybody settle down i'm tony d i'm the head of this school for christian rock uh, everybody please take your seats so we can get started uh, uh can i sit backwards in my chair uh you know so we can Rap? Yes, for the last time, you can all sit on your chairs backwards. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> nice. Now, last week, we covered Love Song But Jesus. Y'all did really well, with the exception of Kyle, who wrote, I want to marry you. The Jesus. instructions were confusing. It was very confusing. So, so, this week, we're going to cover What Do the Kids Like? Did you all do your homework? Uh, You mean, write down what our stepkids yelled at us through our bedroom doors? Exactly. So what do you got? What are the kids into these days? Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, Hating me. I'm not their real dad. Sure, sure. And Minecraft. Minecraft. All right. What can we do with Minecraft? Who's got a Minecraft idea? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, how about you build me up? To heaven, like yep. build Minecraft, right. build absolutely nothing. Roblox, my love for the Lord. You know that's <laughs> the wrong Classic game. Fun. That is yeah. the wrong game, but that's close <laughs> enough. Okay. All right. Why don't we take a break? Uh, everyone can itch under your ankle bracelets, and then we'll cover how to look like you're playing the guitar or at least an instrument after lunch. Fantastic. Ah, love so it. So itchy. So itchy. Can I borrow your stick when you're done? <laughs> <laughs> And we're back. And now it's Friday. So cool. Now we know when, when it is during the week. And it's, yeah, it's officially been far too long since they've showed us an animal in a hat. Yeah. So they're going to do that. Also, where's this fucking elephant that they keep referencing? They're like, Oh, who's going to like shovel the elephant poop? And we never fucking see an elephant. We've seen a dog. We have seen a dog in a clown hat who is perfect, but I want to see an elephant. Yeah. I don't, do they ever show the elephant? No, they never fucking show the... No. They show a swordfish crowd surfing in the beginning. And in fact, in this scene, they admit they don't have an elephant, which brings up the terrifying question of where they're getting where all the elephant shit. Where are they getting the shit. poop? <laughs> where, who, what, what shit are they shoveling? You need elephant shit. I can get that for you. I got a guy. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to have the elephant. But okay, point is, let me, let me set the stage here. This is important to the plot. <laughs> it's Friday and it's right before their big 
final night of the circus. And this is when <laughs> the greatest character ever, the angry clown coach, he's having them all do a visualization exercise yep. to get ready yeah. for the big show. Mm -hmm. This is dark. Yeah. And again, they chose to do a movie about the circus, but in this scene we learn they don't have any circus acts. They don't they have clowns and the newsboys. And the newsboys. So what we watch happen in this scene is person by person he goes, "All right, and what are you going to do up there?" And then one the of the newsboys before. Yeah, and then one of the newsboys goes up, you know, it does like a doodly do. And we see a newsboy sort of standing in a circus-esque environment being like, I don't really have any talents, oh, including also, music. <laughs> also, in their fantasy of their wildest dreams, what's going to happen the other night, there's no fucking lighting? No. Yeah, some, I don't know. What, what's happening? The circus is like running out of money. So like the, their, their electric bill is not paid. So they're I doing guess. their final night. It's, it's so dark. This, I mean, literally and figuratively, it's so dark with the circus going out of business and the newsboys playing the final night. I would go to this because I, I would be yeah. weeping with laughter the whole time if this happened in reality and I got to go. At one point, one of them goes up there and he's going to juggle three chainsaws. But he can't start the chainsaws. Oh, no. And I just wrote in my notes, honestly, if I get to watch a newsboy slice himself open with a chainsaw, this movie is kind of worth it. Yeah, I was really, go <laughs> really, really hoping that Pietro, they were like, he's Pietro, the dangerous juggler. I thought he was going to be the swordfish from the beginning. Oh, that would have been great. I thought that would have been awesome. Yeah. Okay. One other detail about the frame of this scene. Angry clown coach, Hack, he's got a board. So he's, he's having him do the, the positive visualization and he's got a board up at the front of the room where he's teaching him and it's got like one letter that he reveals and he's like, all right, well, here's the, the keys to a good circus. First of all, you got to have, and he pulls a little slap to the side and it shows the letter H and he's like, okay, what starts with H? What do you need? <laughs> and turns out it's heart. It's hard. It's yep. hard. You gotta yep. have, That's the first thing I think of heart. when I think of the circus. <laughs> Damn Yankees, assholes. Yep. Read a book. We should also point out that this this anagram is so long. <laughs> it's not an anagram. It's an acrostic, to be clear. Acrostic, uh, right. They've got an acrostic. Boonard. And it, uh, it takes them 45 minutes to get through the full thing. It's so long. Honestly, I wasn't sure if they were going to get through an actual acrostic or if they just had this like... They don't, by the way. Uh, no, they do not. No, they don't because they, they had to like cut steps <laughs> along the way. And he's, <laughs> he's not going in order of the letters from top to bottom. No, he's not. But we learn that there's an H in the key to the circus heart. Yep. There's also something that rhymes. He's like, okay, what else do you need? I'll give you a hint. It rhymes, rhymes with, with ointment. ointment. And they're Australian, so they say excitement. Except he's not Australian. <laughs> yeah, that joke did get lost in translation. Yes, it did. It's it it's did. impressive when you can lose a joke in translation between English and fucking English. And English. <laughs> yep. It's so. Why did they make this in America? Why did they have Americans in the first place? Like they're they are an Australian band. They're part American, but if you have an American person deliver that line, there's other things that rhyme better with uh, indictment and excitement, right? Like, come on. Really? Wow. And now it's time for the twins to do their show. Okay. If they're not going to show us a fucking elephant, at least they could show me the dog. This is where the dog is supposed to come into play. No. His no, contract no. ran out. No, no, no. Because the guy's like, you know what? Fuck dogs. Let's find something way more interesting to do. Like, <laughs> like what? Like a hamster. A hamster. I, I love this angry clown so much at this moment, though. They're like, we have a dog act. Fuck you. Fuck your dog act. Okay. Oh, uh, maybe what if we fuck your face? I hate you. It's the best. <laughs> and a hamster. Yep. So they do a hamster act with a cannon. Uh, No nibbles. No, is what I said. Don't hurt nibbles. <laughs> Yeah, they put a hamster in a a ball that turns out to be a cannonball, and then they shoot the cannonball through, through a hoop. They shoot the hamster through the hoop, and the hamster's okay. Who, okay, who is this movie for? Who's watching this movie? Great Not question. for the audience. Great question. Seriously, was it, it was like a TV movie? What channel was it on? Was it in Australia only? No idea. I don't Couldn't know. I don't you. know. I th They literally thought that this was going to be huge because... 
I think they made it. Other bands. They put it on music. one VHS Videos. tape. They uploaded that VHS tape in the worst possible way mm. to YouTube. And now it's here to remind us we're in hell. That is the only <laughs> answer I have for why this movie was made. All right. Well, now we get the only redeeming moment in this scene because we get. Really? We, I, yes, I genuinely enjoyed this. We get to watch Hack, the angry fucking clown, do his clown act. Which is awful, Heath. It's bad. No, it's, it's amazing. No, what? It's, what? It's a lung cancer based clown act. Heath, this was the worst part of the movie. A clown comes out with lung cancer and then they give him a spoon of medicine, but it's it's poison and then he vomits into a bucket. <laughs> That's the whole thing. I'm so worried Lots. about our friend There's Heath a lot right now. going on right now. Lot Is Heath okay? Going on. Eli, look me in my heart. Is he okay right now? <laughs> no. You can look me in my he's heart. He's laughing right at the... It's I am looking at the heart. Uh, yeah, uh, the, there's a baby crying in the audience during this time. And I was like, I get it, baby. This is a bad movie. Yeah. Come on. Team baby. Yeah. Not even the movie thought it was a good act, Heath. Angry clown in the chemo ward making people laugh. Classic. I don't I don't get the chemo ward either. Like what? Shenanigans. My goodness. He yells, it's little people at one point too. He's like, look, it's funny because I'm little. So we cut away from that hilarious clowning act, which he Thank you. very much enjoyed. Oh my God. He's amazing. You don't think this guy I is like the highlight of the movie. I have never been more depressed for, about your life <laughs> than I am right now, Heath. Sad clown. It's the juxtaposition. Oh, All right. boy. We need to, I need to give Heath more poison in the sketches in between our <laughs> yeah, episodes. More, more poison clown. You kill him off all the time. Vomit. I, I, I don't kill him enough, obviously. Uh, apparently not. Okay, right. so that is, this is when Blondie runs in and explains that what their circus is missing is the Bible. Is a grand finale. Well, he says, he's got a Bible. He's like, I have found the answer in here. And it's my grand finale where I pretend to be a disco ball. <sighs> I No idea. Well, no, he's not. A, he says a mirror ball. Right, the human mirror ball. <laughs> Literally what he says is, I... I read the Bible. Well, not really. I read about the Bible. I read the Cliff's Notes, and then I read the part that you said I should read. Right, and, and that's not, why that, I need well, that's to be why a I human... need to be a disco ball. Yeah, and he's talking about the story of the prodigal son. I'm pretty sure. What? And and no, this is not that. This nope. is nothing like that. It's not. And he doesn't go home. He's not greeted by his parents. <laughs> Nothing. He didn't spend, he didn't have an inheritance that he then spent while at the circus. Nothing like that. He's like, I found a part of the Bible that has parents in it. I'm a, I'm a disco ball. That's, that is the order of things that happen. Again, my, my notes here are just, am I in hell? What is it like being in hell? I hate it here. This yeah. movie sucks. Okay. And right as you were probably writing that down, Sack, the other clown, is taking bugs out of a jar and throwing them into a bug zapper. I didn't even worse. catch that. I, I don't understand. Just to kill bugs. Yep. Because he's a dark clown. Because he po Remember he poisoned the other clown with the lung cancer? Yeah. We're just so close to his face but as he like he, presses a bug into an electric charge. For the audience? Wait, where is this happening? Is this happening during... What? In the movie? The, it's happening no, in the universe it, of the movie. I know it's happening, but when in the universe? Is it happening during Friday. the show? Friday. It's happening it's on Friday. It was the title Wait, card. so he hasn't even poisoned the fucking clown yet. No, he's just killing bugs. Just, okay. Wow. <laughs> so, now it's Saturday, and it's time for that <laughs> blowjob face from earlier in the movie to pay off. Oh, that's, that's the blowjob face? Yeah, here's the payoff. Okay, so he's he's human mirror ball, Phil Joel. So this is the big finale. He comes out in front of the circus and he's wearing a, a disco ball kind of thing around his body. And then he puts his face toward the sky and they lower down a rope with one of those like, you know, uh, mouth guard things that you bite and yep. then like Cirque du Soleil, they, they pick some up by their mouth. Oh, so you he was practicing his blowjob face to put stuff in his mouth. Yes. Yeah. He was practicing his hanging by his teeth skills. How well uh, did that pin pop out just now, everybody? Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. You have to practice putting something in your mouth? Yeah. If you want to hang from your teeth? You'd want to take it seriously. You want to I'd, want, on that? I'd, I'd want an angry coach to show me how to do it. I'd use my hands. Well, then it's not father? an act, is it, Anna? 
Oh, I just fucking up take a chair up there. I <laughs> oh, fucking wait up. a second. You you were saying the impressive part of this act is that he can put something in his mouth. He's hanging by his yeah. teeth. Yeah, but that you can put your put it in with your hand and then hang by it. The hanging part. No, the mouth practice was the, so that he could stay hanging by his teeth, not so that he could get it in his mouth in the first place. He was getting yoked on his jaw muscles. I'm sorry. You should be. I, first sack and now this. How, <laughs> how is opening your mouth as if to take a giant deep throat? I'm going to say this one <laughs> last time, and I swear to God, I'll end our marriage live on air. <laughs> <laughs> our son will be fatherless. I will go live in the woods. He is not doing the blowjob face thing to get it into his mouth. He's doing the blowjob face exercises to keep it in his mouth. Sure. The way you keep things in your mouth is opening your mouth as wide as you fucking no. can. Yes. You, he's working the jaw muscles. And then, but then closing it the right way and gripping he it. He wasn't yeah. closing it when he was practicing. Cause he, he was, was opening stretching. and closing. He was jaw stretching, he was, but he was stretching. Yes. God. It was yoga I at first. I hate everything. I, I wish you would pay you. attention to the I movie a little you. bit more. I hate, I hate it. Here's I the thing. <laughs> Someday you and I will be dead and our son mm. is going to be like, I want to hear, I want to hear the episodes that we were on. <laughs> And he's going to listen to this and he's going to be like, mm, pass. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's a disco ball. He falls because the little people union. Yeah. The Chekhov's gun shaped cigarette lighter pays off. Yeah. The little people union. They go backstage to the guy who's holding him up and they take out their cigarette lighter and he thinks he's going to shoot him. So he lets go. He falls and crashes. Yeah. Then we cut over to the writer of this movie, which just really let yourself internalize for a second that there was a writer for this movie. That someone <laughs> started writing this movie, finished writing this movie, handed it to someone else, and didn't immediately blow their brains out with a t-shirt. Yeah. Gun. I also like that they didn't know what to call the thing that he wrote and directed. because so they said this. <laughs> yeah, he pops up and it just says, Steve Taylor, writer slash director, director of, of this. this. <laughs> That's it. Fun fact, to steal one of your bits, Heath, this director has directed seven films in total, and he has appeared in five of them. <laughs> really? Five of them. Yeah, he's the Quentin Tarantino as of the himself, Christian music scene. <laughs> as himself. What? So just let that let that seep in. Let that, let that okay. sit for you a second. He's a Tarantino, Kevin Smith type, sure. Yeah, but we introduce him so that he can say... You know, they asked me, could we just introduce another music video because we were supposed to have another music video into this? And I was like, how lazy would that be? And then they introduce another music video. Because they're winking at winking at winking at winking. Yeah. It was like when you get tired of writing sketches. Yep. Fuck you. It's an even number. We know that it's <laughs> bullshit. Right. So now we watch a music video about how all the people who believe in aliens are silly... Really? Because they should be believing in God. Really? Is that what that's about? Yeah. Okay. I thought, that, yes, I think that's what they're saying, which is insane. It's called Take Me to Your Leader. Because it's a, <laughs> it's a stream of consciousness lyrics. Like the, the lyrics made no fucking sense. Okay. Let's see if we can uh, break this down a little bit. I, I actually wrote down the, okay. the first oh, verse yeah, and the, cor this. the first chorus. So you ready? Yes. I'm ready. First verse, Isabel is a belly dancer. Cool. Aliens. Yeah, I get it. You're right. With, I was so on board yeah. with you guys. Well, no, no, no. But let's learn about Isabel. Mm. She's a belly dancer with a kleptomaniac's restraint. So she... What would that be? <laughs> <laughs> None. None. Not restrained. Okay. So she's she's an uh, a free belly dancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on. She belly dances really well all the time. She belly dances very freely and well. She doesn't restrain herself. And continuing the lyrics, tried stealing Helena's hand basket. The fuck is that? Helena hand basket? Helena hand oh. basket. Made a pun. Oh. Made a fast getaway after stealing the hand basket from somebody named Helena. But McQueen, she ain't. Rhymes with restraint. Nailed but it. My queen, she ain't. McQueen. But Steve McQueen, McQueen. Like Steve McQueen, McQueen? bullet, yeah. like fast car going away. Something like that. Okay. Continuing one more time. Cool. This is so, you're right. This is so about aliens. I totally yeah, this, get it. This I totally is definitely get about, this. Yeah, you're this right. is about why I'm you should be asshole. Christian. I'm the this asshole is why right you, now. The belly dancer steals the basket. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. Jesus. <laughs> At the courtroom, 
Joshua judges her ruthlessly on account of Ruth walking out on him. I have no idea what the characters are now. They're just naming Bible people that don't relate. Yep. I want to know about Isabel the belly dancer, but now we're on some new thing. And the last part is in the big house, Isabel is a telling all to the chaplain who's become her friend, which <laughs> didn't rhyme with anything nope. I said so far. Nope, it didn't. Meanwhile, they are coming out of a spaceship. Yeah, they're dressed in space. They're dressed in spa- space things. gear and yeah. come into an alien planet. And there's a sexy alien babe who does not play into this because this is Christian. The boys and girls cannot be on the same planet. Right, yeah. And I just want to say this lead singer and his dance moves. I have mentioned him before. <laughs> it's like to David Byrne of the Talking Heads, you know, with the shoulder pads and the blah, 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 blah. But like he was trying to do the little lad with berries and cream dance. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David Byrne doing the berries yeah. and cream dance is a great description of yes. what we're watching right now. It is wild. I was going to describe it as, imagine if I just tried to dance right now. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I'm doing it. Oh, are you hopping around and splashing I'm in a dancing. bottle splashy? I'm dancing. I have it down dance, as, dance. what if an anger management class tried to put on a preschool play? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then there's a spinny flower, which I got to be honest, I really do like that spinny flower seat. I want to have one myself. There you go. Like, looked fun. I'd probably put my dog in it, have a photo shoot, <laughs> dress her like a bee. I'm sorry. If this song is about aliens, I want, do they know what that means for their book? They don't. Be, okay, just really quick. The end of the chorus is like, just take me to your leader now. Take me to your leader now. So like, it's supposed to be. Like, oh, how crazy would that be if you thought, like, aliens were in charge and there were leaders from not Earth that you have to pay attention to? <laughs> but the music... This video- is how dumb Christianity sounds to an atheist. Yep. This yeah. is a song about that accidentally. <laughs> but the music video is they come to a planet, they splash around in a mud puddle, and then they put an Earth flag and then leave. Like, without even seeing the alien that's there. Okay, I give up. It's like... The, it's like... You take me, take me, you, I take you to my leader now. You're done. <laughs> it's mine. Mine is real. You're stupid. Okay. To be fair, if this music video had ended with God and an alien getting in a fist fight, I'm all the way <laughs> oh, in. Absolutely. They would have taken I'm me back. back in. So with that music video over, he wakes up and they do the, you were there, you were there bit from Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Um, and they're like, you're okay. You landed on sack. Ha ha. He's so much more injured than you. LOL. That's so funny. Ha ha ha. And they did. That's it. They, yep. they didn't make the money. <laughs> but don't worry, because just as they find out they didn't get the money, heck, it's a call from America's wackiest home videos. They're going to give him the money. Okay. I just want to say, so this debt in this movie, the, the big MacGuffin of this movie, the yeah, debt. Yeah, let's tie up the plot here. Um, sure. Yeah, let's it get is it all. too big to be paid off by a Christian rock band at the quote height of their career, according to the the, <laughs> the interviews. Boys yes. themselves, but yep, literally. <laughs> but is big enough to be paid off by a circuit that literally only has clowns and no elephant in one week of experience. That's correct. But not really. Just kidding. But no. But is way less than the going rate for movies on America's funniest home videos. Yep. They pay you a lot, I guess, because that's how they treat it. It's like, all right, they want the tape at America's Funniest Home Videos. We finally made it. So they had, they made enough money. But the real story is even sadder because the newsboys ended up in a David A.R. White movie a bunch of days later. <laughs> they sure did. They but sure years later, after did. getting a new band member. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So podcast listener, I'm about to say a sentence and you're going to be like, oh, no, I wasn't paying attention. I was driving and I was doing a thing. Or I There's was a big doing party. A text. Yeah. Yeah. So no, 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 no. This sentence is the next thing that happens in okay. the movie. So get ready. <laughs> now we cut over to Japan where grandma <laughs> is done reading the story. That's real. That's real. It, they are they're playing their song and then they don't even end the song. They literally stop in the middle of it. And the lead singer looks at the screen and cut to Japan. Right, where grandma has been reading this as a story to two children who she speaks to exclusively in Japanese. Yes. What the fuck is happening right now? I don't know. They're doing a whole going to bed thing. The music's saying Mickey Rooney from Breakfast at Tiffany's is going for a stroll in the background. (laughs) Bananas. A YouTube ad started during this part, and I watched like half of it before I realized it wasn't part of the movie. 
This is like Italian television crazy. Yep. Like no idea. what It's Australian television crazy, actually. My notes here are, hey, yeah. guys, I think a new thing started. Do we have to review this? <laughs> I don't think we have to review this. <laughs> but it's just them. It's my best worst. It's just them jamming in one more Newsboys song at the very end. OK, I have a theory. Really? This is the only way I can explain this <laughs> Japanese grandma speaking in Japanese for the last three minutes of this thing for no reason. Sure. So I'm also going to explain mirror ball, man, human mirror oh. ball all at the same time. All right. I am all ears. I, me too. You're about to okay. wrap this fucking up for us. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. My body's ready. So the song that they play here at the end, the stupid fucking Newsboys song has a video. And in that video, for no reason, I don't know how they came up with this video, but in that video, there's a disco ball in the middle of them singing their stupid song. And there's a Japanese lady in it. So, so they were they wrote a movie around that. And they were like, all right, it's guy dresses up as a mirror ball at a Heath. Hey, Heath, I think circus. Hey, Heath. Heath? I, hold on, let me Do get through it. you remember when you I said you were going to wrap this up? Yeah, yeah, Heath. You fucking liar. Clown with, hold on, clown with cancer. <laughs> and... Japanese lady, the end. And that's what they did. I'm just reflecting. I mean, Nibbles the hamster did make an appearance. They just fit this thing to the weird video they'd already made. And it made no sense. They just put stuff from it. I'm just reflecting on Noah receiving this edit. I am right? very excited. I am for forward that. in the future right now. It's Sunday night. <laughs> Noah, like, pushes his cat off his lap and he's like, oh, all right, I got the files from Morgan. Let's see how their podcast went while I was off this week. And we're just like, clown with cancer. The secret is that the Japanese lady <laughs> okay. also they owns a hamster. Yes, it, it is, though. They ate nibbles, though. That's not, okay. <laughs> nibbles well, that's, is eaten by a Japanese lady in the that end. That part's confusing. Noah, you can't that be mad confusing. at us because this is what happens in the movie. <laughs> two, two things, yes. A, Noah doesn't sound like that. That was a ridiculous impression. Very much B, B, I think I analyzed this correctly. I'm quite certain that they just had that in their music video and then they were like, mirror ball, clown cancer, Japanese lady, cut. I mean, if we know (laughs) anything about the stream of consciousness fucking lyrics that these guys do, like it's like Aphrodite at the asylum buying lots of onions or like Pokemon, our best friends got through the cat, monkey, chicken, fish, frog. Like it's... (laughs) Yep. (laughs) It's literally nonsense. Yeah. Take me to your Jesus now. You know what? Yeah, I kind of I kind of agree with you because if the song came first and there was a hamster in the thing and a disco ball, then it would have made too much sense. You know, ah, uh, yeah, no. 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 Th- th- no, cuz then it, that spoils it. Then it's like, oh, this movie fits together. This was ambiguous and mysterious. Yeah. And then uh, they did a Busby Berkeley dance. Yeah, I feel like Pi stole a lot from Aronofsky's Pi <laughs> stole a lot from Newsboys Under the Big yeah, Top. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, they're, they're the Chekhov and the Aronofsky of Australian Christian okay, yeah. TV movies about Chekhovsky. Because they're a Christian band, though, also they can't have sexy backup dancers in the back. Like it's shot like an in sync video. Yeah, but like they can't have the the like sexy ladies in the back, so they just have a bunch of randos doing the twist. Yep, they're just do. Doing the twist like your dad would do at a wedding. Mm-hmm. I could actually do this dance is actually what my yeah. note was here. Yeah. I was like, oh, I can do this one. It's just twisty thing. It's the ab twister. And then it's the credits. And then it's the credits. Which are the breakfast song. There is apparently an after credit there sequence. There is a fucking after credit sequence and you guys did not fucking watch it. <laughs> you guys didn't watch it. My notes say Eli, which is the placeholder we use in our notes <laughs> before we write things. <laughs> Heath's notes say absolutely not. And, Anna- and so I, ha- you're right, listener. That's right, listener. I have your back and I am going to actually report on this fucking after credit sequence. No one has like, made it through this nobody- episode. Please tell podcast. me this. Please tell me they set up the sequel like Marvel. They fucking do. They set up the sequel. Okay. Are you ready for this? Post credit sequence. Absolutely not. Go ahead, though. He says, missionaries, dear newsboys, this is a this is a letter to newsboys, dear newsboys, missionaries have disappeared in the village of Kung Pao racist sound. They go Kung Pao. What? Yeah, man. They're being held hostage by a Tamalian separatist movement. Come and save them. You're our only hope. What? Also, send an autographed pic. And this is all said over the words that are at the end of the, that have stopped at the credits, end of the yeah. credits. Our audience is aware. The words say, 
You watch the movie, so read the book. Gideon Guide, Luke 15, 11 to 24. Okay. And then... Wait, I need to Google what Luke 15, 11... <laughs> I want to know what sure, they Sure, think sure, 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 okay. sure. While you're doing that. And then it cuts to the newsboys in that same fucking public restroom. And the lead singer is saying, Oh, yeah. You know what, fellas? This is something I think we can do. And they're like, what? What do you mean? Like be newsboys? And they're like, nah, we can go and and help these these people who are being held hostage by a Somalian separatist movement. What? And he says, all we'll need is hard work, fervent prayer, and rifles. And they're like, are you rifles? Serious? What are you talking about? And he said, I didn't say rifles, I said Bibles. And then they're like, No, you didn't. And he's like, I'll prove it to you. And then he takes the remote out and turns off the movie. And then he gets shot with a hail of arrows while he's trying to canoe up to an island. So there's, <laughs> so there's a, a genocide joke. There's he makes a, a genocide, genocide joke. joke. Literally. Uh, by the way, Luke 15, 11, that's the prodigal it's son. It's the prodigal story. son. Okay. Uh, that's fucking gross. Nothing that's to do with that's this nothing fucking to do with And this. it's completely unrelated. <laughs> it's exactly- yeah. So they make a massacring, <laughs> a massacre joke. Yes. They make a massacre joke. And then instead of redoing it like they did in the movie, they just turn it off. They thought there was going to be a sequel. Wow. And they thought the sequel was going to be about the newsboys being like the heroes who attack a village in Asia somewhere. Sure. If, if this if this movie was made based off of a song that they wrote. What song do you think they wrote about a Somalian? If you're aware of a genocide <laughs> positive <laughs> newsboys song that we haven't heard of, please send it in. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna search for that one. That that needs to be a god awful music. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, that's why you don't. Now watch it's over. Now, now it's over. <laughs> now the movie's over. Okay. Well, after watching these Christian movies here on the podcast, um, I usually like to close it out with a question. So that's gonna do it for our review of Newsboys <laughs> Down Under the Big Top. But that's not gonna do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie. So Eli. What's on deck? Well, Heath, I am actually genuinely happy to say I am looking forward to the plot and sense that is <laughs> the Christian movie Hoovy. Lovely. Something with a basketball team. I don't know. Yep. All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 325 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Anna for joining us. Anna. Where can everyone hear more of your stuff? You can follow my dog on Instagram at Magic Pug. I do already. Check. Or uh, I do have an album. It's called The Ring, and it's on any of those streaming services, streaming platforms. I don't know what they call them. Uh, if someone crawls out of the screen, you've got the wrong ring. Yes, the wrong yeah. ring. Correct. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for the podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Anna and Eli, I'm Heath. Promising to work hard, turn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. Breakfast Club clothes. Breakfast Club clothes. Who votes? Animal House clothes. The dog with the little clown hat was never convicted of plotting the assassination of Nibbles the hamster <laughs> and went on to retire a millionaire. The Japanese lady from the end went on to... Uh, no, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not. You do not get an Animal House clothes from me. Absolutely not. David A.R. White managed not to join the Newsboys in spite of also being a divorced dad. (laughs) (laughs) I feel.
feel like Eli hopped on the four and five. Not gonna Eli, no, no, let's do it again. Why don't, why don't you do it? I want to do it this time. I think I wanna do it this Anna time. will do it better than both of us. Okay. All right, Anna, five count. Yeah. But make sure the seconds are evenly spaced, like it's a real five count. What? Yeah, you got to do a real five count based on five seconds. Four and five. It doesn't yeah. have to be five seconds. Oh, it just oh has to I'm be even. starting off. I, I was just going to go with whatever he did. Okay, cool. I don't have any way of telling seconds. Yeah, just as long as you go <laughs> on like okay. on a consistent beat, All it right. doesn't have to be you seconds. Don't know yeah. the All right. I'll okay. conduct. Eli, I'll conduct Eli, over here. No, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. I'm not looking at you. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, four, four five. five. Eli's dropping syncopation bombs in the background like Max <laughs> Roach doing, over there. He was doing body rhythm. I was doing body, body rhythm. Body drumming? What's it called? I don't know. You touching Nick, Nick, touching your nipples? Nick knack. I was touching my nipple. Give a dog yeah. a bone. Called that. Nice. All right. So that was the beginning of the show, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> no, please don't make that the beginning of the show. <laughs> I don't ask a lot out of you. But. Morgan, keep all of that. Definitely send us all that anyway. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Keep recording. Keep re I don't need to tell you. I got there. I'm, doing I'm there first. This is a fun oh. intro. Damn it. <laughs> Anna did get there first. I got there first. I got there second. I got there first. No, I got there first. You oh, literally first. just got there. You just got you there. You just got there. I was there Outvoted so long. Third place. Bronze medal. <laughs> Morgan, send us who got there first. Me. <laughs> I got there first. Cut that I in. Got, no, just, just fuck off. Bergen history. Fuck off. All right. Yes. I was oh there boy. for a I, I have such two. a bad Australian accent. Mm -hmm. This is going to be great. All right. Arnar. Arnar. We're going to explore. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> hey, hey, if that's your Australian accent, we can't do this sketch, man. Uh, yeah, we can't. We just got to have you do an Australian accent. <laughs> You've heard an Australian person before, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, gibbity gibbity! Can't wait. Gibbity, that is, gibbity, that's gibbity. New what I say for oh, that's hey. my impersonation of Ray Comfort. That's, well, that's New Zealand. It, that's right. There you go. We're getting yep. there. Ra <laughs> nice. How come he had? He got a regular accent, and I couldn't. Do he it. doesn't do accents. Um, I don't do that one for sure. And some of the, some of them are American. I want to hear you try it. I want to hear you try after my after he me. He does Gaw, and he does Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and okay. he does Am Pharaoh voice. <laughs> Yep. Okay. All right. I love that. Do you want me to do it? Do you <laughs> no, want me to do it? I can't. You haven't been reading English for that long. It's fine. Oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> English major from fucking <laughs> NYU over here. I was All a right. reading major. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sound it out. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I'm gonna mute my. I'm gonna take my headphones off for this one. I can't wait. He's laughing in my ear. Is that that was the issue? It was all the nothing. Keith, <laughs> could you not distract her with your echoey silence? I hate. I hate run on sentences. Okay. You want me to just sing some lo-fi no. hip hop in the background? <laughs> okay. Okay. Is this lo-fi hip hop? Am I doing it? <laughs> I think you nailed it. I can't yeah. even do it without the headphones on. All right. Eli's on his game now that I'm here. Yeah. I know. I can hear it. I just get to stare at him. He, he, he has rhythm all of a sudden. Un unfortunately, one of the things that I've learned from this record is that because I'm so used to recording only with my ears, I have a completely dead face while I record. Yeah, it's wild. So I've been looking at Anna, and occasionally I look at Anna, and she's looking at me like, Am I saying the a racial fuck is slur? Wrong with you? Because I'm just staring into the middle distance like the undead. <laughs> yep. I'd love Dead it if, in if the you eyes. could like get get into it, have some energy, enjoy what you're doing. That'd be great. Oh, his voice is very, it's very weird. My voice is doing the Yeah, work. it's like it's like his voice is coming out of a, a mannequin. Yeah. Anyway. That's unhealthy. It's really your weird. Foot I'm is, worried your foot about it. Foot is on my foot. I didn't notice that. I'm sorry. You didn't notice? I didn't. I was just living my life. It's hack, and you're touching my foot. <laughs> Tell Anna to stay on I her side. I fucking hate you. Heath? 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 He's Are you putting oh, tape oh, down the middle? He's drawing a, drawing a chalk line. I'm drawing a chalk room. line. Oh, no. I get the no, side of the house with this. both bathrooms. Don't do this, Eli. Which side Not has the bucket? My side has the coffee, so, you know. 
Base. Nice play. He just stole my water, Heath. Heath, he just stole my water. He did. Stole- Heath, <laughs> Heath, he stole my water. Heath. 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 Heath, don't do this. Heath. <laughs> Quick, my Settle battery's running out right now. Settle it. Who's right? Let's do that instead of talking favorite. about the movie. All right. I would prefer this. Okay. Okay. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.